Good afternoon, welcome back to the 120th. Today we are talking about developers, specifically black and white developers, and even more specifically, 510 Pyro. It's not particularly new as far as I'm aware, I think it's been around for 10 or 15 years, developed by a chap called Jade Affair, but currently being distributed in the UK by James Lane of Zone Imaging. The other bottle I have here is another black and white developer called HC110. That's the, the developer that I've been using for many years um, and that I am very happy with and is now all over my hands. Now, I don't really understand the difference between this and this. I get it that it's different chemicals. I get it that it, it behaves differently and develops your film in some sort of different way, but I don't know why or, or what or how it works. What I'm interested in doing is taking it out and doing a side by side. Um, and, and seeing exactly the, just what the difference is in the results between HC110 and 510 Pyro. And then I'm gonna catch up with James and I'm gonna pick his brains and find out exactly what the difference is. And hopefully we'll all understand it by the end of that. Maybe. Uh, anyway, let's go and take some photos first of all. So I'm gonna do a few things. Number one, I'm just gonna go and run a roll through the, the Bronica S2A and I'm gonna develop it in 510 Pyro basically to figure out what I'm doing. Then I'm going to head out with the large format camera and I'm going to take alternate sheets of, of identical exposures seconds apart without moving the camera and we'll then develop one in 510 Pyro and we will develop one in HC110 and we'll put the negatives side by side and see what they look like. First thing to do is a straight test. So we are going, going to, Corey you're going to come and sit here aren't you? FP4, found one. Look at me though, eyes to me. Yeah, thank you. Why don't you just take a picture of yourself? <laughs> I do, a lot. What are you doing? Take a picture of my bottle. Alright, there we go. Now turn around and give me your face again. Oh, lovely, Cora. Cora, do you want to be a photographer when you grow up? No. Very happy with the results of that test, especially the ones that I managed to get in focus. Time now to head out with the 4x5 camera for the main test. Right then, we are up here by St. Arolda's Church. So there's not too much definition up there at the minute, so I'm just going to attach a red filter. There it is, looking clean enough, I think. Film holders one to eight loaded, and I'm gonna shoot uh, one and five, two and six, three and seven, four and eight. That way I'll be able to uh, just put two, I won't be trying to work out which side is which when my hand's in the dark bag. So, I've got a plan, trust me. Right then, we are composed, we are focused. The camera is, I'm not. This frame, we are gonna shoot sheets number one and number five. Three, two, one. And now we're going to shoot exactly the same thing on frame number five. Three, two, one. So I think the next one, we're going to go over here. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Okay, uh, let's develop these now. So we've got the AC110 ready. Um, we've got the 510 Pyro ready. So, first lot ready for development. In goes the developer, starting the timer as we go. Right then, I've moved the HC110 negatives upstairs to hang and dry. Next up is the 510 Pyro, so we're going to go back into the dark tent. I'm going to load them back onto the freshly cleaned Mod 54. Before I do that though, it's Friday night, quarter past six, it's time for a beer. Okay, 510 Pyro, let's do it. In that goes. Keep mixing that for a few minutes, make sure it's fully mixed. So we can see contrast in there. So yeah, be interesting to see how these come out. The next thing we'll do, uh, I'm going to dry them obviously. Um, and then I will we'll have a look at them then, next to each other, side by side on a, on a light table, and then we'll scan them. 
and we'll go from there. All right. So here they are, side by side on a light table. It is immediately obvious which one's which. So the negative developed in HC110 is the greyer looking one, and obviously the 510 Pyro being a staining developer causes this sort of sepia tone to the negatives. It immediately looks as if there is more contrast in the stained developer, but that might just be because it looks that much more heavily developed because of the stain. Very difficult to see at this stage what difference there is, if any, in the detail. But let's scan them and let's see how they come out. So now here we have the images scanned and run through Negative Lab Pro to turn them into positive images. I haven't done anything else here apart from scan them and reverse them. Now, Negative Lab Pro does do some of its own work to kind of balance images. So a little bit hard to tell exactly how much difference there is, but certainly once Negative Lab Pro has done what it wants to do with them, they kind of look quite similar actually. There's not too much difference between them, but we obviously can see there's masses of difference on the negatives. Right then, apologies for the change of scenery. I am now filming the end of this video in Alaska, uh, as you do. Um, more on that in the next video, so watch out for that one. Um, but the results of that were really interesting. Um, when you look at the negatives side by side, uh, they look starkly different. Uh, there's a real like, obvious visual difference between the two. But then looking close up is where we start to really notice the differences between the two images. So the big things we're looking for here are, uh, number one is highlights. That's the one thing that 510 Pyro is well known for, is being very good at developing highlights and giving you tones within highlights. The easiest place to see this is the sky. Obviously in these images, the sky is quite blown out uh, and therefore the difference that we're seeing is basically just some tones in the sky on the 510 Pyro versus no tones in the sky on the HC110. So there is a bit of a difference there, but not quite what I was expecting. I think that's the kind of thing you would see much more obviously on a portrait, for example, where uh, the highlights on a face um, are less blown out and less of a block and actually you're getting tones within the highlights. What's really interesting and something we can see really clearly is if we dive in really close on the negatives and look at the detail and the grain. Grain, first of all, uh, here's the 510 Pyro and here is the HC110 and you can immediately see a really big difference. When I zoom in to a very small section of the negative, what you're really seeing is probably very similar to the difference between two 35 mil images. That difference between the grain on the two images would be much more noticeable on a 35 mil image, where you're blowing up a negative that size uh, onto a full screen, as opposed to a four by five negative where you're blowing up a negative that size onto a full screen. So the difference in grain between a 35mm frame developed in HC110 and a 35mm frame developed in 510 Pyro will be really noticeable. So I think we can safely say we are definitely getting a big difference in tonality, a big difference in grain, and a difference in sharpness. The big question, and what I'm really interested in finding out, is why that's happening. What is the difference between the two developers? And the best way to find that out is to go and meet James Lane, who's the guy who actually makes 510 Pyro for the UK market. So let's go and do that. I'm now uh, sitting on the sofa with James Lane, um, who is the, now, uh, let me get this right, you're the distributor, UK distributor for 510 Pyro, is that right? Uh, well, the manufacturer. Have you got, you've got some sort of license from Jade Affair or something, have you, to uh, do it in the UK, is that how it works? Is he not, is he not manufacturing it himself anymore? He never did, he was never interested in doing it. Oh, he just, really? He likes to invent developers he's got an insane amount ah. so th those are uh, the two images side by side that you've got in front of you there first of all you think i might have slightly underdeveloped the fp4 in hc110 do you think uh yeah yeah um by the looks of it it seems quite on the thin side the 510 pyro one looks slightly over actually. oh does it <laughs> this was always a risk that i was going to um show james my negatives and he's going to tell me everything i've done wrong <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that brings me on to the the, the question that i'm actually here to ask mm -hmm. which is what is the difference between how HC110 operates and how 510 Pyro operates? Easy to start off with how they're similar. Okay, yeah. Uh, so they're both what people call uh, chemical developers. They're both high pH developers which um, focus on developing 
quite uh, fast. Traditionally, a, a chemical developer usually leads to so high acutants because it exhausts fast because there's no sulfites and more grain clumping because of the very high pH acti activity. Mm -hmm. They're both long shelf life because uh, mm -hmm. they're both um, yeah. organic solvent based. Yeah, old, that the, is... the old HC110 rather. Uh, is there a new? Are they reformulated it? Yeah, they reformulated it. When did they do that? Uh, 2019. It's basically just watered down version. Oh, um, really? Yeah. That's really yeah. interesting, actually. Yeah. Um, I'm going to blame yeah. the thin negatives on that <laughs> that's <Yeah>. right <laughs> okay and is the the, the pyro element it, the the pyro is that the i don't know is there such thing as an active ingredient the thing that is actually doing the yeah so that, that is pyro so that's a pyro uh, pyro ingredient which is doing these sort of unique effects so then, yeah so what happening is because you're getting slow down development in the highlights it compensates with the stain from the pyro which is um, just an oxidation product of, right. of uh, the ingredient of the staining, it's just an oxidation product and uh, the more oxidised the, the, the developer is in those regions, the more mm -hmm. staining you're getting and what happens is that the stain ends up being like a filler for that, that density, so it's like fake density. Okay. It also fills up the gaps between the grain clumps because the thing is when you're scanning where you're printing, mm -hmm. when you're seeing grain, you're not actually seeing the grain, you're just seeing the, the gaps between the grain, oh. grain clumps. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. So, so it's not only reducing grain clumping, it's also hiding in the grain. Right, okay. Um, uh, we, we've added density, more grain clumping. So the yep. more an area gets developed, the more grain, cl grain clumps um, uh, um, happen. It doesn't matter which um, developer you're using. Still following? Me neither. Uh, but what I took from that and what I thought was important there was the what, what James was saying about the stain and how 510 Pyro proportionally stains certain areas of the negative. So what he was saying is that, uh, first of all, really interesting that when we talk about grain, we're actually talking about what we see and what we describe as grain is actually the gaps between the grain. Um, and that the more grain clumping there is, the more grainy an image appears. And what James is saying about the 510 Pyro is that the staining element of it kind of acts to, to mask the grain. So he said that it is a proportional staining agent, which means that it will stain more in the more developed areas of the picture and stain less in the less developed areas of the picture. And what the stain is doing is it's filling in the blanks between the grains. And I'm kind of thinking of this as, as kind of like how you tarmac a road. You start with big stones on the bottom and then you put smaller stones and then smaller stones again uh, so that the smaller stones, and by that we're talking about the smaller molecules of the stain, fill in the gaps between all the big stones of the grain, which is the standard development process. Uh, so we end up with a smoother picture, but without losing any detail. That's how I'm kind of understanding it. I will check this with James before I post it to make sure that I've not just completely misunderstood, uh, which I might have, you know, it's complicated stuff. So just um, tell me, where can, where can people get 510 Pyro from? You can get it direct. Um, from? But uh, for me, www.sonimaging-photochemicals.co.uk. Um, um, uh, or you can get it from um, distributors, Parallax, um, Process Supplies, First Call, um, Silverprint. Silverprint, that's where I got it from. Yeah, yeah Silverprint, yeah. they also do internationally. We can do, oh, okay. do any, pretty much any country. Mm -hmm. I know one of they're going to get it soon. Are uh, they? Yeah. Um, what are they he, waiting he's for? He's been saying it since November. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, isn't it? Cool, yeah. yeah. Come on, Paul, sort it out. <laughs> get it in stock. If you haven't tried 510 Pyro, try 510 Pyro, because it's actually a lot easier. I actually sat on the fence for a long time. I, I, I sat there reading all the, the 510 Pyro chat on the Facebook <laughs> group, and was like, man, yeah. And then eventually just thought, you know what, I'll try it. And I'm really glad I did, actually. I'm really, and I will definitely be, be using it again. Cool, all right, well, James, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, and um, yeah, I'm, that's uh, it. All right, there we go. That's the end of my test. I wanted to see how HC110 and 510 Pyro stand up against each other. They definitely both have their uses, neither bottom bottle is going in the bin. I'll be using 510 Pyro for some stuff and I'll be using HC110 for other stuff. What I'm really interested in doing actually is, is developing some portraits, some 4x5 portraits or some uh, 120 portraits uh, with the 510 Pyro to get that wonderful tonality. I think that'll look really good. Lots more stuff coming up on the channel, as I say, currently in Alaska. Um, that's the next video. So make sure that if you're not currently subscribed, you do hit subscribe so you won't miss anything and the excitement that is in our future together. 
Thanks for watching. I shall see you again next time.